Hi, Ernesto. How's it going, guys? Good. I have a question. What is your question? What's your writing process? Oh, you're Mine. just diving right into it. Hey, guys, this is an episode <laughs> of the Buddy Cast with <laughs> Ernesto Ledesma, host of the uh, Who's That Cat podcast. I uh, just did with a show with him at what No Clue that? Brewery last night. Um, how was your set? It was pretty cool. Um, when we got there, there wasn't, I mean, there was people, but everybody was kind of drinking and kind of looking away. So towards the be- the beginning of this, the, the show, I think it was up to the, the, the comics to try to get the crowd in. And then, um, they started getting rowdier as it got like towards the end of the night because they were getting drunker. Right. And that's when I went up. Um, but it was cool because it was weird because Devin, Kevin Davis went up and then he did his time and everybody was listening and then it went great. And then I went on and everybody just started. <sighs> talking and i was like oh shit um but it was a lot of fun i was kind of lit too because i hadn't really drank in a minute and then ezekiel was like you just get beer just like just beer like not even a beer just you just keep getting beer so i got crazy with that i was a little high um it was a lot of fun though that that brewery beer is a different animal yeah i don't think people realize like you can drink uh an orange wheat from hanger in from Ralph's in a six pack, and that'll get you pretty lit. But if you drink like two glasses of an orange wheat at Hanger, exactly. you're fucking lit. Like, <laughs> yeah, because I had I had three IPAs, and then I was like, oh shit, I am I am way too lit. It's like, good. It's I mean that's the fun part about it. I was I think that was my first brewery that I've ever done, and it was fun because I was just as lit as everybody else. Yeah, because <laughs> like I got there early, so I just was like, all right, I'll have a beer, and I had like the Mexican mocha stout. Oh yeah, highly recommend if you uh, if you like uh, stouts or or Guinness or um, Abuelita hot chocolate uh, or Abuelita it, hot chocolate. Yeah, that's yeah, it, no, that's it's, a spectrum. Yeah, it, it is. It's it's like a it's like Abuelita out of the tap almost. It's hmm, so, it's so thick. good. It was just like Abuelita. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but that's how that's how my set went. It was funny. We were doing it on a like the stage was a palette. Like I know you had an issue with an act that like I almost fucking yeah, died. You took a step off, and yeah. it, you almost fell off. Yep. Um, Ezekiel ended up breaking it because he was also fucking drunk for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I I got on stage or when my set started, I was like, "Fuck this stage! I'm gonna I'm gonna get off this stage." And I was doing my jokes to people, but then I was like, "Oh, I realized nobody could really nobody could really see me." So I just tried to hop back in in the middle of my set. It was kind of it's weird. What what was that? Maybe eight inches of height would do to just your performance. Yeah, it's it's weird. Not necessarily towering, but being able to just stand above people because you're better than them. That's you know? exactly what it was. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to be down here with these fucking, these plebs. Peons. Peons? Peons. That's like a that's Star a... Trek thing or something. <laughs> Peon. That's like a 1990s word. You're such a 90s kid. I like it. Peons. Thank Let's you. bring that back. <laughs> just start calling everyone peons. When you bond, uh, we're going to pee on you. That's what that means. <laughs> that is, that's exactly what that means, and I'm going to start peeing on people. <laughs> start? I didn't know you... I didn't st- already do it. You didn't know I no. had stopped. <laughs> yeah. Did you, is it like smoking? You, you're like, I had to quit for a little while and get back to it. You take a tolerance break, you know, <laughs> then, it's like, then it's way harder when you go next time. It was a rowdy crowd though. Do you have like, cause you know, how long have you been doing comedy now? Almost three years now. Three years. Yeah. And like outside of just writing material that, you know, or, or just doing your material performing, there are like little, tips and tricks and and tricks of the trade that you use to kind of rot, rot, uh what's the word bring in a crowd mm-hmm. or, or or to capture their attention or just cut through the noise did you have to go to any of your like tips or tricks or were you like fuck it i'll interact with you guys and hopefully you listen no it was definitely like i had to start pulling shit out of the bag like <laughs> instantly you know what i mean like i try to go into a bit right away and uh it was like half of the crowd was listening and half of it wasn't. So then I would try to use crowd work to get the people that weren't listening um, and then just lead into a joke with that. So that's what I, that's really what I was relying more on uh, yesterday is some crowd work off the cuff shit and then material once I got their attention a little bit. What is so what's your when when the crowd is rowdy and you're trying to get their attention? What exactly do you do to get their attention? Um, you can play with. Uh, I like to play with the, your dick right there. Just. <laughs> It works. It works every time. <laughs> no, uh, with just the sound of your voice, because um, even if they're not paying attention, if they're facing away, looking at a TV or whatever the fuck, if they hear you get quiet and all of a sudden you're just yelling, you know what I mean? They'll they'll turn around like, what the fuck is happening? And you got them for that moment. You just got to make sure it's it's you know something worth their time. Um, apart from that, I mean, 
That's mostly what I was relying on yesterday. Volume? Yeah, volume and uh and crowd work. Mm. And you said you 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 just started doing this 3 years ago? Yeah. What inspired you to do that? Um I was a latchkey kid growing up like uh so um nobody was ever at the house and but Comedy Central was always was always at the house, you know mm. what I mean? So I used to watch a lot of comedy like those 30 minute South specials. Park was your babysitter. Not South Park, like stand up special. Like comic remix on Comedy Spe- or Comedy Central. Just whatever whatever stand up came on, I would I would watch it. Um that's like probably the one of my earliest memories of uh just like of being at the house is just watching like stand up just by myself, you know what I mean? And yeah. then you have that moment where like, you know, something happened something funny happens and you try to turn around and talk to somebody but nobody's there. So you <laughs> you're like, All right, that's That's still me. Yeah. I mean, shit happens. You're like, did you see Cool. Never mind. My the, bad. This apartment smells so nice, by the way. <laughs> the studio smells nice. <laughs> I try to clean it before people get here. If, if you got here an hour before, it smelled like slow cooked chicken and coffee. So that's the opposite of a problem. Also, <laughs> that sounds good. Hmm. <laughs> what was the catalyst for you first getting on stage? Um, depression. Like I had a. Um, I was with this girl, and it was like a really just the shittiest relationship ever. What's and then, your name? I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she actually she actually used to go to to you know that that uh the getaway mm-hmm. uh, yeah she used to go to school there so oh, oh UCI yeah, UCI. yeah, yeah. Oh. so when um so when i started going there i was like this place feels familiar you know what i mean <laughs> and then you went into the bathroom and you're like oh i know this oh, place this bitch no <laughs> um wait i'm sorry what what happened Why oh yeah it? yeah um so whatever I was thinking of, I was like already depressed and I already wanted to do it when I was like thinking of breaking up with her. And then I was like, dude, fuck the, I actually, I think I might've told her too when we were breaking up, she was like, well, what are you going to do now? And I'm like, I'm, I'm probably just going to start doing stand up and then, <laughs> and then be famous and then, uh, and then bash your name on a special or something. You know what I mean? Or so on a podcast that you record at your friend's house. <laughs> yeah. Or whatever, something like that. If you want. But, uh, did she believe you? Uh, no, it was uh, like, I was like, it was a fine breakup. Like it wasn't. And we had already broken up a couple of times before then, so by the time like the third one, you like, this around, is for real, like, for real. Yeah, I was like, no, but this time for realsies, we're breaking up. You know? <laughs> so, and then after that, like, I just needed something to do with my time, you know. So I actually, I try to, um, like to look up online and everything where any comedy venues or anything. And the only thing I could find is the, um, Ontario Improv because I didn't really know about open mics, right? Mm. I just knew like stand up comedy. It's a comedy club. You gotta yeah. go to the comedy club, right? And that's when I saw um fucking William, the Henderson. the mic that they have. Yeah. yeah. So Was that your first mic? I wanna go check it out. Oh. I wanna go check it out and I didn't get up. But I saw some dudes from Vegas there. Yeah. Um They but, used to go like every yeah. time. Yeah. Every month they would come out. So I saw them there and then after that they went down to the hideaway. They were like, We're gonna go down there and I was like, Oh cool, like what well, I don't even know about an open mic. So I went and I saw them do it and again I didn't get up. I just kinda watched it. And then after the the thing, I was like smoking weed with them and I was asking them about stand up. And then one of them said, um, John Lewis Campbell. He was uh he said, Stand up is weird because um because I, I feel like a lot of people start it because they feel like they don't get love and then once you start that's kind of what keeps you going because you're getting love from strangers, but then you just get to go home at the end of the day. And it's like, you feel love, but it's not something that you have to like, um, work on, like, like to, to keep, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just yeah. love. You can for, conjure it every night yeah, for like 10 minutes. And then you get to go home and you just go back to your fucking life. That's an interesting half sad way of <laughs> looking at it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, that's interesting. What, um, so then, was your when when did you first get on stage? Was that at the hideaway? Um, yeah, technically, yeah, at the hideaway. Was that before we started running it? Or no, I think it? you were already running. I, yeah, no, you were definitely you were running it three years ago. Yeah, yeah, Jesus. and I walked up to you, and then you did the, um, you did the whole thing like you asked me if this is my first time, and I was like, yeah, it's my first time. And then you came up and you were like, oh, it's his first time. You did that whole thing, you know? Yeah. Did that and, help or hurt? Um, I did well. I did well my first time, <laughs> and uh, and I opened up with a with a. Baby AIDS joke and some homeless abs stuff. Homeless um, abs. I think I know that joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great joke. And then uh, I thought, I was like, this is going to be this is gonna be so easy. And then, I, <laughs> <laughs> then I came back and for some reason, like I was at the hideaway again. And for some reason, some I don't know if you remember this. Some dude showed up with like a camera crew and he had like lighting equipment. Oh, Bryce. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I'm just standing there because, like, just pretending to be a comic, you know, my second time. And everyone's like, you're going to go up? And I'm like, yeah. And then they're like, are all the comics over here? And I'm like, I, am, I'm, should I just be over there? So I walked over and they're like, all right, we're going to be recording all the sets. And then I remember, like, the camera was on and it was my turn to go you up. You let Bryce record everyone's <laughs> sets? Yeah, I can't remember what was going. We were trying to do something uh-huh. and it just didn't work. There's, was, a, there's been a few times people have come to the hideaway and tried to record some shit. That that's always weird. Anytime, anytime I'm orchestrating it, it's for some sort of purpose. But there have been times where people brought camera equipment and I didn't know who they were, and they started. I don't know why. Yeah. Uh, well, that's what happened when I was on stage. Like I, I remember just being super shaky. Yeah. And, you know, and sweaty, and like there was a hole in my shirt. <laughs> but was that your second time going up, or you'd gone up and then you came back to the hideaway? I got up the first time there, and then I came back to do it again. So uh-huh. it was the only place I knew of. Yeah. Um. And at this time, like you just have to picture, like it's my second time there. Nobody likes me, sl- like slash knows me. You know what I mean? Because they're just like, fuck this guy. You know what I mean? It was like 13 of you guys may be there, you know? Um, so all you guys were like, fuck this guy. And I would go there and just watch you guys just like in my head. I'm like, oh, these guys are fucking the shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then you got to know us and you realized. And then I was like, oh, they just work at this. I just have to work at this, you know? Um, but yeah, dude. And then I bombed like super hard and uh, like, I legit, like I just went in the bathroom and I was like, I'm probably going to cry right now. And I didn't, <laughs> I didn't cry, but, <laughs> but I wanted to. And that's the important part. <laughs> yeah. How did you, uh, weird. So how did you get past that mentally? Like how, cause I meet, I, I've seen people who will, they'll go up their first or second time or whatever. And that, that like, Oh, it's their first time here. That really helps for some reason. Yeah. I, I guess it makes the audience like, okay, well, let's not be assholes. But then when they after they get cocky, they come back and they start bombing and then they give up. So what made you push through? Um, since the first time I like it went well, I was like this forever, just all the time. You know what I mean? I want to do this all of the time. Um, and then when it didn't go well, I was like, well, I already <laughs> I was like, I already bombed on camera. <laughs> <laughs> What else is gonna happen? It's rock bottom. I can go nowhere but up. Exactly. That's exactly how I felt for. But then I bombed for months too, and then um, I started getting like somewhat better. My jokes were still bad jokes, but I could deliver them better. Yeah. And um, and then I actually just found the. I should have brought it, man. I found the recently my first book from my first year, <laughs> and it's the worst. It's a lot. Why? Why was I talking about molestation so so much? I remember that. Yeah. Um. <laughs> It's everybody's first six yeah. months molestation and Their dick. incest and yeah. it was wild, dude. It was just fucking horrible. And then I didn't know about punchlines for some reason because a lot of the jokes are like on jokes, yeah, quote unquote jokes in the book are just like, like, oh yeah, I seen this guy today, and I was like, what a fucking like this guy's gross, what a mutant, like, and it's like, dude, that's just mean. That's not a joke. <laughs> you know? They're just funny premises. <laughs> What is your writing process now? Like from inception or thought to okay, it's working now. How does it how does it go for you? I um I'm pretty um I'm pretty in my head all the time. So I'm always thinking about shit and a lot of the time since I'm obsessed with comedy, it it, it comes down to a comedy thing where whether it's like, Oh, this would be a cool sketch idea or this would be funny or this is a new tag but I'm always thinking about it in my head. So by the time I go to put it on paper, it's already somewhat worked out. Um So then I put it on paper and I rewrite it a whole gang of times. I go out and I try it everywhere. And then I eventually end up switching it up, you know, Mm. cut the fat or whatever. And then once I have the joke that I'm working with, I'll go back and I'll add, um, I'll change up words, funnier words. You know what I mean? So what funnier? What do you mean? Um, just always editing your jokes. Yeah. Instead of like, uh, you said I don't know. Instead of words. like a water bottle, it'll be like a like a wa- like container of water. Just any dip, like you know what I mean? Yeah, not, not something not so run of the mill. Like this is not a bottle of water. This is a fucking H two O receptacle. Yeah, that's a small water. So this is like a like this is like a midget water bottle. Just yeah. anything, you know what I mean? Mm. Anything. Just uh, so using words that people don't normally use to describe things. Yeah, because I mean, because and my thought process is if that's where my brain goes the first time, then then I gotta be. Then anybody could think about that. The guy sitting right there could think about that. You know what I mean? So now I gotta remove it. I gotta be like twice removed from what the first thought of my head was. So, um, so then I go back and I start switching words. And once I feel like the joke is like good, 
just like if I could just go up to a mic and just read it off a of paper and it gets a laugh, I'm like, okay, that's fine. And then I'll go in and I'll put faces into it. You know, it's the physical aspect of thing. I'm like, I got to move around this way for this. And so uh, that, that helps me in terms of like, uh, I'm always working shit out. So even when I get bored of the new stuff that I'm working at, I'll go back at jokes that are already working and I'll just add a physical aspect to it. So it feels like it's never really done, you know? Mm-hmm. It's always, always growing. And, and, um, yeah, I think it's important. A lot of people get stuck in their track of like, okay, this jerk joke works and it's done. And it's like, I don't know if a joke's ever really, ever really done. Cause you got to do it to like different people and then you got to do it differently. You know, yeah. your, your punchline has to change. Otherwise you're just singing a song and like, it's boring. Yeah. Like it's, it, I mean, it's one of those things where, um, you, you remember we were talking in the parking lot that one time uh, after the hideaway and it was just, it's as simple as, I don't know is a lot less funny than I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, if I write it, I don't know in the beginning and that's getting laughs just how it is. You go back and just switch a bunch of words and just add a little bit of sauce to it. It'll just make your joke a whole much, a whole lot better. You know, when you start writing, do you do the thing where it's like, I wait for inspiration and then an idea comes or are you like, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to think about things and write? I'll write whatever the funny was so if i had a conversation with somebody um and something funny happened in the conversation i'm not going to write the whole conversation i'm going to write the sentence i'm going to write the word that made me laugh and then since that was the funny part to me i'll just go back and i'll write a joke around that Hmm. like i had a joke about ponies and really the whole joke i wanted it i wanted to say ponies and horses are different people I just wanted to get that sentence out, so I wrote a whole joke just to say that. <laughs> it's a seven-minute setup here. You know, ponies and horses <laughs> are different people. That's the whole. Don't even get me started about unicorns. Yeah, or just uh, like freestyling. I wanted to say freestyling, um, and it has just, but I didn't know how to use it, so now I just use it in in between, like as a like a riff. You know what I mean? Yeah. How do? What's your thought process with riffing? Like, how do you go about it? Um, it just happens. You're, 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 um, like yesterday. It wasn't like, um, I'm going to be up there and I'm going to riff in between whatever. It was just like, uh, I get nervous when there's dead space and, um, I'm insecure of losing the crowd. So if I, there's a joke, I already did my joke and now they're laughing. And then, um, especially if it's a non sequitur, there's, I don't have a segue. So I'll just say some dumb shit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I'll be like, sir, stop looking at me in my face. Or some some stupid shit, you know what I mean? Just start talking with the crowd a little bit, just riffing. But it's not something that uh that I think about doing while I'm doing it. It's just something that's that happens. You right, know? right. I think um people can get fixated on like a, a technique or a style or 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 a, a specific way of doing things when it comes to off the cuff or, or when it comes to riffing, you know. And and I think. I can't believe I'm going to use this reference. I think it's like Tokyo Drift in the sense of like, <laughs> <laughs> that you can't really learn how to drift by talking about it. You know, you kind of have to do it. And and if you think about it, then you're probably going to crash your car. It's You have to feel it. And you have to you, – you're bottling lightning. and But you also have to trust your skills. Like when it's when, – if you're a, an adept drifter, you've been doing it long enough or you've been trying it where it's like you know how the car is going to react and how it's going to take a corner. And you can't be like um, – you can't think about it. It has to become second nature like a – and a fucking another pop culture movie reference top gun when when um, maverick is she's like um what what are your what are your thought processes when you were experiencing this mig and and tom cruise is like up there you can't think if you think you die and it's like the same thing on stage it's like if you're trying to riff and you think you're going to die like you that silence is going to it's going to hurt you're going to feel it and so is everyone and everyone else and you have to just I think ride you should, the wave i think you should be able to like riffing you should be able to riff before you can even write a joke yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to exercise that. Fun. It's like this is like the Tokyo drifting. Like you got to learn how to drive the fucking car before you're out here drifting. Because a a riff is a joke you haven't wrote. That's all it is. Yeah. Before you were doing stand up, before you were writing jokes, how the fuck do you think you were being funny? You were just riffing. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know what I mean? You're I a funny person. I didn't sit there like the night before and be like, yeah, I'm gonna get the classroom with this one. <laughs> Some shit happened, and I was like, yeah, he is ugly or whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> what a uh, mutant! I had a. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had a call back. <laughs> I had a different experience with it. I didn't see. I like. I grew up with technique, and then using that technique to then riff. 
So I just did different. No, no, no. We're talking about drift. Oh, wait, 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 but drift. do you think that's detrimental or do you think that it didn't matter? I think that it just made it's just different. I think that the way you guys seem to think about it is just different from the way I think about it. And I don't think either one's better or worse. It's just how I started. Like I started with the whole improv thing and that was just nothing but technique mixing and riffing. So like when I write and shit, it's very technique driven. And then when I'm on stage, it's technique. And then a lot of like, it's here's my joke and technique. Now you got to see that. Then I'm going to talk a little bit and it's just me talking. And then I go back to the technique. So it doesn't feel rigid. Mm -hmm. So. I think that's um, – it's great that you found what works for you, but maybe try to find something and do something that doesn't work because it's not necessarily detrimental. It's just a different muscle, you know? So instead of doing leg presses, you do deadlifts and squats. It's just – it's a different uh, muscle in the sense that, like, I think what you're trying to do when you do art or when you're trying to express yourself or anything is you're trying to find that, that flow state. It's like like surfing. Like, you're just trying to exist – in the moment and uh, like like you did jujitsu with mr steven roth a couple days yeah, ago wrecked bro <laughs> <laughs> Seen that video. um but like those purple belts they're not thinking you know they're not like i do this this and this they're like oh, i've been here before i know your arm's gonna go here and then i got you let's do it again mm. and so it's a flow state that they've found and i think that is the path of least resistance when you do things you know like when you when you shoot a free throw and you have that pre free throw tradition or, or you're doing any sort of penalty shot or there's that you know bounce the ball three times look them in the eye 10 seconds and then do it and it's to kind of uh start and get yourself in that flow state sometimes it doesn't work sometimes it does but do, do you think it's more important to be like um because i think i think uh when i think of stand-up i, I well, the shit I'm trying to do is more like, oh, that seems hard. I, I, I'm gonna try to get that to work. You know what I mean? Instead of like, oh, all right, like I got this. Like he said, I've been here before. I could do this. Um, that's cool and that's comfortable. But I, I think the uncomfortable is where I'm just like, dude, that, that sounds like a challenge. So I'm gonna try to make that work. You know what I mean? No, I like, like mean. most recently, um, um, I have a joke, uh, called like, it, I, it's called the fag joke, right? It's just a, I get to say faggot and nobody's gotten mad upset like upset at me yet. Yeah. Um. It works every time. It works in L.A. It works in some rooms where I didn't think it was gonna work, and that took a minute to get to work because I'm like, dude, everybody's hating me because I'm saying fag right now. But that's like, like uh, Johnny Gold yesterday just dropped a couple of hard end bombs right at the <laughs> end of his set too. At a, at, and then and then he was like, I see a brother back there, but. He looks like he's upset, but fuck him. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> they were talking after the show for a little while. Yeah, I mean, and it's like, and it, it didn't go over as well as he thought it was going to, but but that was the fun part I for him. I don't even think he thought it was going to go over well. I think he just did it regardless. No, because before the show, he was like, oh, this is, I'm going to try to do this. So, you know what I mean? I I know for a fact he was doing the thing where like, these, this is going to seem hard right now. But that's going to be the fun part if I could get it to work, you know? Yeah. No, I know what you mean. Um, I know exactly what you mean. I'm on uh, with the, for me personally, when I'm writing, like right now, I've, I don't know if you've seen it. I've been talking about death and childhood a lot. That's, yeah, that's the two subjects that co <laughs> go together. Yeah. <laughs> but, that's, but it was hard. It was like, it was like, all right, how can I make this very morbid topic that everyone has to deal with, make it so that everyone relates to it and still finds it funny? Yeah, exactly. That's, I mean, that's what you're doing is you're taking, you're just shoving your perspective down people's throats and then try to make it funny is basically yeah. the whole thing. Also, what video? Cause I was, when we did, we did jujitsu yesterday at 10th Planet and I don't remember someone setting up a video. What are you talking about? Uh, the parking lot. There was a parking lot. Video. The, when he put you in lockdown at, um, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. What was that thing called? Lockdown. Locked. It's called yeah. lockdown. Yeah yeah. yeah. yeah, man. Like jujitsu is really cool. Yeah. I'm for it. Do you ever do it? I yeah, not not like this is gonna gym. sound like the fucking Rogan podcast. Do you ever do jujitsu, bro? You should really think about starting a podcast. Have you eaten DMT? Elk, DMT. <laughs> you you should go bow hunting and fucking hunt dinosaurs and shit. And dinosaur with jalapenos? Are you kidding? Me? <laughs> uh, you cook that dinosaur in a Traeger grill. <laughs> I I used to uh, I like jujitsu a lot. Um, and I used to one of my roommates he used to take jujitsu classes and then. We had a gym in the garage. It was like padded down. Nice. We had bags and everything and like mirrors so you could check yourself out. Watch each out. other while you yeah. fuck. 
and uh and we would do that dude he would just be like all right i learned this thing and i'd be like all right let's fucking let's learn it you know what i mean so he would just teach us whatever the fuck he learned and we would watch it on youtube and then mm. be like let me let me try to put you in a dart stroke or something you know what i mean uh and it was a lot of fun and i was like my roommate was like six three and way bigger like just bigger than me just a way bigger person so it was really challenging i really enjoyed it but i got him a couple of times you know yeah it's rewarding when that happens yeah. like there's um at, at the gym that i used to go to i was i'm you know five foot seven like i was one of those smaller dudes there was yeah. a lot of fucking animals in there and just surviving and not getting tapped was a, an, my first accomplishment. I was like, oh, he didn't get me today, but I'm going to go throw up in the corner now because it was exhausting. So, Dude, and it takes your whole body. I love it. Yeah, it's one of the few things you can go 100% in effort and not really injure yourself or anyone. And then, you know, um, it was weird. when I remember when I would do it, like a lot of the times I would have my eyes closed because it's not even about you could just feel the other yeah. person's body. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's because I mean, any little any little move they're going to make you're so especially like if they're in your guard or something, if they go to move their leg, you could start feeling their leg moving before they even you know what I mean? Yeah. So if you have your eyes closed and shit, it doesn't really matter. You're feeling everything around. Yeah. Our coach used to like encourage that. The only reason we couldn't do it at at our gym was because it was small and you got like 40 people on the mat. And it's Mm -hmm. like if you close your eyes, you you can't really be aware. Um, but when there was a light class, he'd be like, all right, everyone, close your eyes. You got three minutes. Go. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So it, it was really um, being building that sensitivity. And I think that's why, like, especially with 10th Planet and jujitsu in general, like smoking weed is beneficial because I think it makes you more sensitive. It makes mm-hmm. you more aware, not necessarily good for your reflexes, but I think the awareness over being quick about your reflexes is, is a lot more beneficial than just trying to power through shit. Exactly. Know? Yeah. yeah. I have my favorite question that I always do on this podcast. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about incest? I'm just kidding. (laughs) Pro incest. Very pro incest. Yo, I came here tonight. This this abortion shit. Did you give a fuck about the other day? All right, so I got. We were talking about because the you're talking about because the other day we we were at the Ontario Improv and there was like seven people with abortion jokes. Oh my god, it got so annoying. Yeah, um, it's you're gonna. It's the same thing as uh. We were talking about earlier in just my first book, it's just horrible material. You know what I mean? It's what you, when you're first starting off, you're just thinking of like, all right, let me shock some people yeah. and let me try to make fun of something. Cause you're thinking like, I'm going to fucking change the world, man. I'm going to make fun of some shit that nobody's <laughs> thought of. Yeah. And then you get there and it's like, oh, everybody thought about it. It's like, it's like waking up early and being like, I'm going to hit the DMV early. Cause you yeah. know what I mean? Get ahead of the curve. But everybody <laughs> does that. Yeah, yeah, what's the especially annoying is when someone I I want to say at that uh, improv audition, one of the guys did I shit you not like seven abortion jokes, yeah, and yeah. at some point he was yeah, like, "Yeah, but I still got a spot. I don't know why you're yeah, bitching right now." Yeah, an abortion <laughs> set. That's what it was. <laughs> but at some point, I well, I want to say he was like, "Oh, is this too edgy for you?" And it's like, "Shut the fuck up! Oh, yeah. Stop it! Stop is, it!" Isn't it like it's not? It's bad. It's not even that it's edgy. It's yeah. not good. No, it's a shitty joke. Yeah. yeah, I'm not offended by the abortion thing. I'm offended that you are thinking i'm offended like it's weird it's like come on that's why i save mine i i I, uh i save it towards the end of the set like if it's a short like five minute set i'll close with it just because it's like all right if you're offended then i'm already leaving um but it's worked out to where like a lot of the people don't get offended and even when they do i have a tag for it ready for when people get offended so that's fine softens a blow yeah yeah um but i mean and and then but it was an open mic i guess so what you're doing is you're just working out jokes, and he might not use all those jokes. He might be like me. I just kept one. No, he does. I've seen it before. One abortion joke. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it multiple times, and I'm He's tired working of it. on abortion hour. Yep. What that's you know? <laughs> His special is going to be called Planned Parenthood. It's He's going to give amazing. birth to uh, <laughs> to a abortion hour. He's going to take it to <laughs> Alabama, see what happens. That's yeah, That abortion shit is ridiculous. It's so crazy that that's a thing. <laughs> I don't even know why uh why it's such a big issue. I know why. Just cuz they think it's they're killing babies. Um yeah, but that's fine. <laughs> we, we're, All we're, right, we're here now. <laughs> we have we have a whole death row. Yeah. <laughs> but What do you mean? The, they were babies. The logic being like I understand the logic of like 
if if I genuinely felt that oh they're out there cutting babies' heads off, I'd be like, yeah, I should probably bring out a sign too. That's not okay. It's go- I feel like it's just gonna get to the point where people are like, we gotta save these babies, kill anyone who wants to abort, and, and it's like, what what are you doing? It's the issue. It really what it comes down to is. We can't decide on when a baby is a baby or when a person is a person. That's what it is. There's some people who's like, as soon as it's conceived, it is a baby. There's people who are like, after three months, two weeks, whatever. We all need to be like, okay, this is the cutoff line. Because I understand the feeling of like, oh, I don't, uh, they're murdering kids. I get that. But it's gotten to a crazy point now. Like, when a, when a woman's raped, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's... <laughs> The legislation, though, in itself, you know, I don't mean to get technical and political, like, they don't even really fully contextualize the difference between a fetus and an embryo. Like, they're saying six weeks in, you're killing a fetus when that's not technically or biologically true. It's still just an embryo. And, and so they they keep using the words in, in the, the legislation, like, you're killing a fetus, you're killing a fetus, you're, but it's like, that's not what's going on. And they're like, yeah, we don't care. Like, you're still killing a fetus. It's just I just think dumb. it's a bunch of people that are just making laws, but then it's like, uh. It's fucking old people. Yeah. And they don't, they don't live the life to where that affects them is the thing, you know? Yeah. Um, when someone makes a drug law and they've never smoked weed once in their life, it's like, can you stop? And also the thing is like, dude, if you're, if you've got millions of dollars and, uh, and you're against abortion, but you get, like, if you're cheating on your wife and you get somebody pregnant. That's happened. Yeah. You're, <laughs> you're going to get an abortion, but you're not going to be open about it. You know what I mean? Yep. So I feel like that's just, like, they would do it, but they just don't want it to be legal. It's like, it's like when you see a mayor smoking crack. You know what I mean? Like, they're, supposed to be against crack and everything but <laughs> yep. behind closed doors you're gonna do whatever the fuck you're gonna do anyways you know yeah so I'm, i mean you're just making it harder is the the whole thing like if you stop abortions somebody that gets pregnant from a rape and you're not allowed they're not allowed to have an abortion they're gonna do some crazy shit and might take their own lives might fuck up might fuck up the baby worse you know now you're gonna have some baby with a that's born with a hanger in his eye you know what I mean? Because the lady did it wrong. It's just forever in his <laughs> yeah, eye. Yeah, it's just forever in his eye now. Yeah. Then he goes to drink at Hangar 18. That's who he is now. He has like a hanger imprint on his forehead or something. He's like, he's like uh, Harry Potter. Basically. Okay. This just, is with an abortion rails. hook. You know what's crazy about the law, though, is that like they're not, they're not penalizing the woman that wants to get the abortion. That's not like they're it's not the girl that's going to get in trouble it's the doctors it's they the 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 legislation and, and the the bylaws in alabama and all these states state that the woman is not the one who's going to be punished so it's not necessarily that the abortion is for the sense illegal it, there it's the doctors that are going to be oh, um penalized so it's like that 90 the the doctor doing the abortion is going to go to jail for 99 years um i'm sure the woman is going to experience some sort for of 99 push years yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah see yeah. the fucked up yeah. thing is that they should they should be like okay well we're obviously doing something wrong because this guy works so hard to get in the situation where he's a doctor yeah and if he's willing to risk all of that to try to help somebody I mean, mm. in his yeah. fucking head he's doing the right thing and he's a professional medical mm-hmm. he's just offering the service too it's like if car washes aren't illegal but going through a car wash and washing someone's car is illegal it's like okay that's a weird gray area like yeah. does he want money or does he's just trying to make a living i feel like maybe we fucked up by having the civil war and not letting the south just get the fuck out just go go do your own goddamn thing because <laughs> like every like florida man when I think of when I think of the South, I think of Florida, man. I just think of insanity and crazy backwoods nonsense. And I have, you know, I haven't seen all the places in the South, so maybe I'm just, you know, of speaking. I'm definitely not going to see Alabama ever. Yeah, like, dude. There's I'm no there. reason. <laughs> I might check it out still. <laughs> also, also, I mean, uh, also, let's be real. A lot of us should have been aborted. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> yes. No, actually, my mom doesn't like me. So, yes. I could see that. Yeah. I, I don't like you. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, we your booked, mom, we booked your mom... Ernesto, and he was like, is it at Aaron's house? No. All right, I'm that's in. Like, yeah. Wait, but does your mom do not like you? Yes. Oh, that's crazy. Why? What'd you do? I didn't do... I existed. I'm not even like... 
she loves me like a mom should love, like any, the, that natural love. She's not sociopath, mm-hmm. but she does not like me. I don't know if that, does that distinction make sense? No, that, I mean, I, I'm not a, somehow, somehow I turn into the black sheep of the family too. Like since I, cause I used to be like a pastry chef and mm. I used to have a spot and a fireplace. <laughs> a life. <laughs> and a girlfriend. <laughs> used to be a person. And I started doing stand up and I have none of that, no. you know? <laughs> so, uh, well, my mom didn't like me before stand up. She just doesn't like me. Yeah, but you did improv, so. She didn't like me before that. <laughs> <laughs> So you can't even blame her. <laughs> no, she just doesn't like me. Like she, I, I very confidently believe that if me and my brothers were never born, she'd be a much happier person. Yeah, I mean, but you kept. Have you sat down with your mom and be like, "Mom, why don't you like me?" Have she would. She would just scream at me. Oh. She would like I've I didn't I've done that, but I didn't ask it in that way. It was a lot. It was a lot nicer. And every time it was just yelling. Yeah, I get that because I I don't have the best relationship with my mom. Also, probably why I started stand up. Also, you know what I mean. When, remember when you were like, "Is it gonna get sad?" It's about to get sad. <laughs> um, yeah, I never the same thing. I was like a latchkey kid, like growing up, because my mom was a single mom, and ever since I was like in elementary school, middle school, she always had multiple jobs, so she would be out all day, and then I would go to sleep. Right, like I, I would get out of school, come home, make food, watch TV, whatever, go to sleep. You and then, make food. You're the best latchkey kid ever. I would have. To, I would just warm up like a hot pocket, dude, or 19 bagel bites. A picture you going no, the, out, the, murdering the, a raccoon. No, the, <laughs> the things Mexicans do is they just make a big pot of beans, and then, <laughs> and then you could just eat beans Throwing forever. On some tortillas. And, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> that's some prison um, shit. But what are you uh, So, like throughout the day, I went to see my mom. She was working, and then um, at night, I would go to sleep. She would come home, and then by the time I woke up to go to school. Like, she was already gone to work, right? So, like, a lot of the time I was by myself. And I'm the youngest of six kids, so um, everybody was doing their own thing. Everybody's a little older. They're all hanging out with their friends after school or whatever. And I was just staying at the house all the time. Um, so I never really, like, built a, like, a solid relationship with my mom. And then after, like, so that was, like, middle school, elementary school. And then in middle school, like, eighth grade, seventh grade or eighth grade, um, I used to live in South Central LA. My brother was like gang affiliated and he got shot, which is why we moved down here to San Bernardino, right? Is he so yeah, alive? He's super yeah, safe. He went from Unfort- South Central to San Bernardino. I know. <laughs> it used to be, it used to be not that bad though. It used to be not that bad, but, uh. And then you moved down there. Uh, yeah. And then it started getting <laughs> you brought just gang worse. life with you. <laughs> Pretty much, to be <laughs> honest. Um, but, um, so then after that, he was in the hospital for like, they dealt with that, like for like, cause he got really fucked up. So they dealt with that for like, uh, like years or whatever. Yeah. And so then she would always be at the hospital after that too. So then the thing was, um, so then I didn't know her really elementary school, middle school, and then high school. It was all this bullshit. So she was just dealing with that. Um, so I, I felt like I never really like know my mom and she's like weird because like I'll try to talk to her this mm-hmm. way. Like the last time we talked to her, she called me and she was like, Oh, if you need help with anything. And I was like, no, what do you mean? I figured it out <laughs> this far, lady. You know what I mean? Like I don't really need help. And then she gets upset and I'm like, no, like I try to talk to her like, no, lady. I like, I just don't really. You're calling her lady. So yeah. that says a lot. Listen, about... bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, no, I don't really like, you don't know you like that. And then she just gets, gets upset. So I know what you're talking yeah. about. Do you really feel like though that 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 relationship is a spark or a big part of your stand up? Yeah, I mean, because that's the whole reason I would just stay home and watch stand up hmm. is because nobody was around. You know what I mean? Who did you watch a lot of? Like, um, anybody, anybody who was on. Because I, I feel like Comedy Central for a little while, like, they'd have the, a rotation of like six comics. Yeah, you know? I mean, that's. Fucking Dane Cook, Ralphie <laughs> Jesus, May. I remember Dane Cook. No, like... but like Todd Barry, like a lot of East Coast hmm. comics is what I like. Bill Burr, uh, Louis. Uh, Gerald, all the guys from like fucking, um, uh, yeah. you know, the, the guys, Todd Barry, shit like that. Um, so all that stuff was on Comedy Central when I was growing up. So I think it's, how old are you? I'm 26. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. My question, my favorite question I, I ask. Um, okay. Within the IE, is there anyone, is there a comic that you look up to, uh, respect? a lot feel like is underrated like a lot of people don't give them enough respect or that they're just super funny that you want to shout out like who who works um i think juan Sias definitely works like he he does well every time i see him so I, I really respect that as far as um comics that i really respect i don't know if necessarily to the ie 
Anthony Davis is somebody that I feel like I learn a lot from every time I see him. Not necessarily just sitting down and being like, hey, teach me some shit. But every time I see him, I feel like... Because even from the beginning, when I started doing stand-up out there in the IE, he would come around. And I'm like, dude, this guy... He's the shit, you know? So He's only been doing it maybe a year or two longer than you. Not that much longer. Yeah, I mean... He and puts a lot of work in. Since I was like... Maybe it's because since I was uh, starting, he was I was already like, dude, this guy is so up here. That um, that I always think about that. Like I always think of him as the, the guy that's like setting the tone, you know? Especially now where he's like really blowing up and doing all these festivals and traveling to do stand-up and all that. Uh, I mean, I really respect that. And I think it shows how much he works for what he wants. What is it about his style of comedy that you really, that you've gravitated to? Um, he talks about his personal life, which I think it took me a little bit longer to start doing. Um, so I feel like I know him even just from listening to his stand up. Um, he's a great guy just in general. Like one time I saw somebody heckle him, like, and he made him really upset or whatever. Or I don't know what happened, but the guy was being a douche, and then Anthony was writing a bunch on a paper. He was writing a bunch of fucked up shit about the guy, and I'm thinking, like, he's going to tell him, or he's going to say it to the guy. And then he ripped it out of his notebook and threw it in the trash. And he was like, all right, I feel a lot better. I'm like, wow, I wish I could do that. You know what I mean? Instead, I'm going to go home and think about it tonight, you know, like when <laughs> yeah. somebody does something to me. Um and he does a lot of, uh, he plays with the, the sounds, um, his cadence, I think, I think it's funny. Um, like I learned, I used to just yell right into the microphone and you know how, I mean, you guys have seen him, you know how he puts the mic away and he just fucking yells, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's like, I learned that from him. Um, and, uh, and I will say that that's great for a live show. Like if you're in like, the OR, or you're in the hideaway, or something small where there are people there that, that you can still, if you need to, you can talk to the back of the room without a microphone. That yeah. works well. But if you're trying to record something, that makes it garbage. Are we talking about when we recorded? Well, just in general, like mm. more than Anthony, like I've seen people do it when I've tried yeah. to record things, and it's like, if the audience can't understand you, they can't laugh. And when you're trying to record a video or a tape or just record a set and you do that, it doesn't translate. come across in the same way. Yeah, it doesn't translate via video like that. It's it's specifically for a live show, which is no detriment to that. But, it, I mean, I would say don't do it unless you're in an arena that you're mic'd up and it's great and it's going to pick you up still. Yeah. Um, I think also uh, Hector Lara. I've been really impressed with that guy lately. Um, is he the, is he your pick for underrated or is he just a guy that you I don't I don't have I don't I'm not gonna do that I'm not oh gonna, okay I'm not gonna do the You're underrated above that. no it's just it's it's everybody's working hard yeah. you know what I mean fuck a comedy competition dude because I do like I do comedy competitions I've never won one you know what I mean is that why you're bitter <laughs> no I'm not bitter but it's just like you can't who's who's judging. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is it another comic? If you are, it's like, fuck you, dude. You know how hard this is, and you know how everybody can have a good night and a bad night. If you're not a comic, fuck you more because yeah. fuck you. You know what I mean? So I feel like I'm not going to be here and be like, that guy works harder than this guy. Everybody's working hard. No, um, As far as underrated, overrated. I was just going to say underrated. I never. You can say overrated. I'm curious. I'm, I'm overrated. <laughs> okay. Um, people think I'm a lot better than I am. Um, or you know what? Act, like I am. I am overrated because people sometimes they'll come up and then they'll just be like, "Oh, I think you're really funny," or they'll ask for like advice, and I'm like, "Dude, I'm trying to figure my life out." You know what I mean? I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I guess. Don't you think that's kind of a you know, like when someone says on stage, we do a bad joke, and then they're like, oh, is this too edgy for you? They, I feel like they're kind of mansplaining to you. They're telling you how you feel, how you should feel about their set when it's not true. And in, in a sense, like when someone says you're good, that's their opinion. And when you say I'm not good, you're mansplaining your life. Like, oh, I'm not that good. You're telling them how they should feel about you when you instead of just respecting their opinion. Oh, you think that it's fuck Like when people come up and give me a compliment. Like yesterday... This this dude came up and he was like, dude, good job, blah, blah, blah. And I was standing next to a comic and I'm like, thank you. And then they were like, see, dude, you're fucking killing it. And I'm like, no, the guy's drunk. You know what I mean? <laughs> and they were like, why do you always go there? Yeah, we, I think as comedians, we're naturally kind of negative people. Comedy comes out of complaints. And I think a lot of us have problems letting us live in the victories. Tragedy breeds comedy. 
Yeah. Well, you know what's weird is that the word comedy and, and comedies in it, when they first started out only meant that it was a a production that ended in a marriage. It had nothing to do with being funny or any sort of timing. It was just, this is a tragedy. Okay, someone's going to die. It's, it's a sad ending. This is a comedy. Oh, they get married in the end. Like, that. that's all that was. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. Weird. Wait, but who... Who do you who do you guys respect in the in, in nobody? The, as, as well you should. As, as well you should. Anyone anyone that shows up regularly, anyone that I see working on stuff, and and that's almost everyone that I see. You know, I, I'm lucky enough to get a stage close to my house three four times a week, mm-hmm. and I get to see um, the same group of people come in and come and work with new shit. And I'm like, that's a terrible joke. And then two weeks later, be like, that's a great joke. Yeah, you know, just people that are. Or working, I, I respect any. I shouldn't say working comic, but any grinding comic that uh, keeps at it. Because, like when you go to the improv, you see a lot of hobbyists, a lot of people. Are like this is my first time. I'm gonna try it. This seems fun. Just trying to check something off a bucket list. And yeah. then you see three comics down there that are just upset. Like, dude, I'm trying to work some shit out right mm-hmm. now. And and those are the people. You know, Hector Lara, Carlos Patino. You just um, pointed at me. <laughs> Tony Ross, you know, there's a lot of of talented writers, performers, comedians um, in this scene, and it's so small and it's so fresh that it's hard to pick one or two. It's a, I think it's, I've surrounded myself with a good group of people that just not for me raise the bar. Like they're, it's like they're they keep coming up with new shit. I need to yeah. come with new shit. So definitely, everyone that comes to the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday mics, it's like, all right, well, that's that's dope. Good for you guys. You pointed at me. Oh, because when we were at the Ontario Improv and we were both upset because we didn't get to go up. <laughs> yes. And, and we were like, dude, if we got up for sure, we would have, we yes. would have made the cut. Yes. I, yeah, I should probably answer that. Uh, what is the question again? Just who do you, who do you respect or think is underrated in the scene? Um, I respect, uh, KJ Robinson. I don't think he's underrated. And you think he's, rated just right he's rated uh, he's rated exactly <laughs> yeah, where he, he should be if, rated if this was online call of duty he plays ranked like he's, the kid he's, is he's good. in a ranked he's good yeah yeah um and then underrated i, I would have said tony ross but not anymore like tony ross seems to have finally found his um flow i don't know how would yeah he... uh drink less before the show that's his flow <laughs> and, he, <laughs> and is it just me or is he like getting laid more it's weird right? is he like, he's got the confidence of somebody who's okay. out here big fucking. dick energy not big di- not big dick energy but uh just like sex is less on his mind because he's actually doing it now. i think i think uh i don't know maybe i don't know mm. but i would have tony said you fucking seems... dude like you <laughs> let us know he seems confident is what i'm saying i like it he's a lot more confident now I he's like i think he's fucking hilarious like he did you watch his seven minute clip on youtube uh-uh. watch it it's funny okay he has a joke in there i'm not gonna give it out but i was like fuck i wish i thought of that you yeah. know what i mean like that's... he's a I... good writer i think i think he just needed a space to be comfortable you know and until like all these people started coming up and and really embracing who tony ross is because i think especially with the newer comics there tony ross is kind of in a, in an anthony davis situation with you where they're like oh he's already been doing this and, yeah you know they didn't see tony <laughs> drunkenly go up stage and say, say faggot, faggot for over and over again i'm yeah. never letting him live that <laughs> they, down. S- they see him do do well do write a new joke and yeah. it works and so he's people have embraced him and i think that's you know what Dude, you were saying they we find love that <laughs> fucks me up because these new comics and then i feel like they look up to me a little bit sometimes weird, and i'm right? like dude no you know what i mean yeah but that, oh sorry go ahead no go for it that's what i was gonna i i love our scene right now you i mean that's why i keep coming back thank you know you. i'm glad you're here it's you guys are super nice don't don't be creepy. But, <laughs> <laughs> Get I was touching you. <laughs> you touched me in the leg. Uh, no, I mean, because I go everywhere, but the like L.A. seems like I get in, I do a spot, and I get out, and I fucking go do another spot. Yeah. You know? Um, and that's how everybody is. And I have friends in L.A., but, like, we're not um, hanging out after the show or before the show. I just get there. What's up, dude? You know, we smoke, like, a cigarette or a blunt or have a beer, and then go on and then we're like oh, i'll catch you later and then maybe i'll see him again later um that day or not but when i go down here i make it a point to hang out with you guys even if like that's why a lot of the times i don't even watch the 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 comics because i'll be hanging out with the comics on the side i think a lot of you guys are like it's more um like communal would, communal 
Yeah, but your your friends. Yeah. Also. Yeah, I um I have a question I'm gonna ask you. Yeah. In a second. But like this this scene is I love it. I like everyone that's been like what George said, everyone that's been coming consistently is getting better and you can see it. Like you can actively see them get better. And there's this weird now that there are newer people coming up, there's this weird like are they are they looking up to us? And that's that feels weird I just fucking because hope not. Guys don't <laughs> don't do that. It, it makes me feel good but bad at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like uh it's like, oh cool, recognition, but it's also like oh, dude. It's not earned. I just feel like um like they just haven't seen better. Yeah, they don't know how good there's other there's some people that are fucking killers. Yeah. They just haven't seen it yet, but they will. And then they'll stop respecting us. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> no, the good thing is that if we just keep working, we'll always be a step ahead. Yeah. You know what I mean? Keep ahead of them. No, it's good. They're on our tails. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, uh, Carlos, Jay, and Jonathan are all every, I see Jonathan every day at the apartment, fucking writing. So he's, he's putting yeah. in work. Fucking his girlfriend, doggy style, writing jokes on her back. Like, yeah, man. And then you know what? Also in your, in you guys' scene, it seems like a lot of you guys are focused on self improvement uh, outside of stand up. Yeah, doing other things. Not doing other things. Self improvement outside of stand up. Like just, a lot of you guys are like, all right, um like I know Jay works out a lot. I don't know if he used to be morbidly obese, but um No, he said he used to be pretty fucking fit. And so Oh, he's re this is the worst. This is the bad Yeah, yeah. He did comedy, he went down. At, at least from what I remember. He said he used to be in pretty decent shape. Okay, but he's just trying to get back to it. He's doing that. I I like you're always Climbing stuff or something. <laughs> <laughs> climbing the ladder. Stand William's well. always like running or some shit from his problems or something. He's <laughs> running from something. What are you running from, William? Uh, running, running's been important for me. I don't know if it's been as important for Will because uh, it, it it kind of translates to how I kind of view stand up in like in the sense of like everyone's on our tail. We got to keep up. And mm-hmm. when I go running with Will, like we fucking go. Like we ran. So I don't know if you guys remember. Will and I met up one morning to to just race. We ran three miles just to see who Fucking could do it. Nerds. Quicker. Yeah, dude, we did it right <laughs> out here. We ran three times and we both almost threw up. Like, and I would not have done that if he wasn't on my ass or if I wasn't on his ass. Is is it scary for you to think that like uh, maybe somebody might pass you up? No, like, no, I don't. I I do my best now, try not to not really compare myself. If somebody is successful and they're from our scene, I think it's good. I think then they're gonna be like, oh, where do you do comedy? And then they're like, oh, Riverside here, mm-hmm. here. And it's like that's just good for all of us. You yeah. Know? When the tide rises, all the ships go up too. So it's not a, it's not a competition for me, but it is. I look at other people as almost setting a standard. It's like, oh, right, you keep raising the bar. I need to work to be above that bar. Mm-hmm. So it's just um. It's a more of a pacer, like how, where should I go? Where should I be? And um, what was I? T- oh, running. So yeah, it, I think it's important in terms of duration because you said when you first started, you bombed for months. Yeah. You know? And I think when you first start out in comedy, you're like, this is never gonna end. But once you do it for long enough, you realize that eventually it ends. And it's like running. It's like it sucks for like a mile, but that goes away eventually as it's, long as you run long enough. <laughs> and then it, the, it's the thing where like a year in wherever you feel like you peaked and you're like, I'm the shit two years in. You're like, I was trash. You yep. know, yeah, that's, you the, that's the best yourself, feeling. Yeah. You even kill yourself. You're like, I can't believe I told people I did comedy. Yeah. Like it gets <laughs> to the point, you know how, like when you go and you try new material and it gets a laugh, um, bringing it back to like, you like the new class of comics. I feel like they come up and they're like, that was funny. Cause they got laughs, but in your head, you're like ah, trash. Yeah. <laughs> so trash. Yeah. You know, um, that, uh, so, yeah, I don't get to go out to other areas very often. Um, mm-hmm. but when I do, it feels strange, but you're out, you're away from the buddy system far more and the, from the IE more. What are other areas like? Like, how would you describe if you were to compare and contrast good, bad, everything in between? Like, what is it's pockets of people that are friends? Um, people put up their friends no matter what. Nepotism is going to be a thing. Um, people are nice. It's not necessarily that they are nice, but they are nice to you. You know, um, what else? No, um, I think one of the things that I learned is nobody, nobody, even if they like you and they respect your comedy and they want you to keep doing it or whatever, um, nobody cares if you do comedy or not. If you don't get up for a month, 
the first week, maybe the first two weeks, somebody's gonna be like, "Where's what's his face?" Mm-hmm. And after that, they're just gonna be like, "Whatever," and they're living their life. Like nobody, nobody's invested in your stand up like you are, so nobody gives a fuck. Mm-hmm. I think that's what I learned the most from doing um, spots pretty much everywhere I can. Is that nobody cares, and the only reason you're out there doing it is for yourself. So that's it. Yeah, you've been on a tear recently i feel like you've been putting up numbers you were going out what twice a month for like a or twice a, a night for a month almost craziness yeah i think i'm like 20 what is it like 20 something days in and like 40 something sets in yeah just trying to like not get a break it's the same thing as when you um i like la because i do a spot and then right after if i feel it because you're gonna feel it as a comic you're gonna be like i should have done this i should have tweaked that i should have said it like this and that's all you can think about. You don't think about like your, oh, I crushed it on that one joke. You just think about the one that didn't land or whatever didn't go over well. And you just want to get up and fix it. Yeah. So, um, doing, um, doing a streak of mics, like 40 whatever sets in a row without a day off, it, it just keeps you in that moment, you know? Do you feel like you, you get burnt out at all or are you burning out at all or is this, you're still loving every minute of it? I, I'm tired, but I love it. I love to do it. Like, um, the days when I don't want to go out and do it, I'll do one spot. Mm. And I'll, but you still go. Yeah. Cause, I, those are important, I feel like, to go up when you don't want to go up. Yeah. Um, like, um, there was a day that came up where I, like, I was already tired. I was really tired. I didn't want to do a mic. I was, like, sad. So I was like, I don't even want to get up because it's going to be, like, a depressing set. Um, and then and you just force yourself. It's because it's a job. Yeah. You know, it's a job you're not getting paid for. So. In my head, I'm like, dude, I used to go to work when I didn't fucking want to do this. I don't want to be out here tonight and doing this spot. And, like, cause there's people come up and then you got to, like, smile and be happy. And it's like, dude, I'm depressed right now. But I got to get up and I do my set and then I feel a lot better afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's important. Like, because I have to put it into uh, perspective for myself a lot because um, depression is very real for me. And there are days, there are weeks where I don't want to do anything. But it's like, I essentially my job is five minutes five mm-hmm. to ten minutes at a time and it's like you can't fucking swallow it and fake it for a little while yeah. like, so i try to shame myself into going on stage and it's important i think a lot of the grinders and la is a great meat grinder in that sense of like you if you don't go up it's because you're lazy basically yeah because yeah, there's mics everywhere there's a place to do comedy somewhere if you look Dude, i've gotten it. up at a bar at two thirty in the afternoon you know what i mean for like eight people How'd you do? Fine. Fucking crushed it. Two thirty. As fine as you could do at two thirty. Those daytime mics, yeah. That was a different Um, animal. Yeah, audition time. (laughs) (laughs) It's basically like, dude, like, um, like I, I'm pretending to be happy all the time. I can't do it on stage for five minutes. Yeah, you know what I mean. I'm just gonna fucking do it if it, like, I don't know. It's surprising how how much, like, if I go on stage when I'm sad. Just afterwards, I'm like, it's fine. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> Idiot. Why was I sad? You know what I mean? Um, do you, I, I feel like you also have depression, Aaron. No, he's happy all the time. <laughs> what the fuck are you yeah, talking but, about? <laughs> but that's what, that's what it is. Yeah. It's the happy people are like the saddest people, yeah. you know? Yeah, what you were gonna ask me something? Is the, that was it. Oh. It wasn't. A, it wasn't a question. I was you digging at you have for a second. depression. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, it was more of a statement. I've actually been. It's interesting. Um, multiple people have come up to me and be like, "Are you okay?" Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know, Jonathan did that to me the other day. I was literally. It was after back to the grind, and I was standing in the front, just enjoying my life, having a great time. Uh, and then he came up and he was like, dude, are you okay? You seem like more depressed than usual. <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, not. I'm having a great time, you know? <laughs> than usual. Yeah. What I try to explain to them is like, I'm not upset. If I'm sitting at the, the show and I'm not seeming happy or silly or whatever, I'm not upset. I'm just thinking about how we can improve the show. That's it. Like, do, you, do you guys do this thing? I, I know you said depression is a real thing for you too. Um, so, so I feel like my base level. I was talking about this with somebody. I feel like my base level is sad. And when I'm having a good day is when I'm just not feeling nothing. I'm like, dude, sweet. You know what I mean? And then if I'm a, and if I'm a little happy, that day was the shit. You know? <laughs> do you guys, do you guys feel like that at all? Or it's starting to be neutral. And then it used to be that it used to be just terrible every day. Yeah. And then, uh, and then it went from that to now it's neutral. Um, I used to, uh, be i would say my entire life i was depressed mm-hmm. until 
about October. And then all of a sudden, it was like, have you ever been in a night? And then he was single. And yeah. then- <laughs> and I, no, for like, and it had nothing to do with my last relationship specifically. It was just, it was be, it was, all right. Have you ever been in a nightmare and then you wake up and you're still in the nightmare, but you don't realize you're still in the nightmare? No. <laughs> no. Really? That's never happened to you? It's specific. Why are you surprised that I've never, it's the most specific that's a thing. question. No, that's, that's a thing, right? Am I, am I crazy? Yeah. In a sitcom, maybe, but okay. go on. All right. So have you ever been in a dream? You woke up, you're still in a dream. That's a, that's the same question. Oh, uh, no, but I know what you mean. I know okay. What you okay. Mean, yes. So it was like, and then, but the moment you wake up, you really wake up, you're like, Oh, I really am away, and you can feel like I'm awake. Mm-hmm. It felt like I was in a nightmare for 27 years. And then around October, I started to wake up from that nightmare, and I was like, oh, oh, I'm awake now. This is nice. Mm-hmm. It's, it, it, And I think what it was was the whole relationship with your mom thing um, was that my family, specifically my mom, was actively pushing me away, could still trying to push me away from the things that make me happy and what I want to do. So I redirected all of that energy towards relationships with women. And I never figured out who I was or what I wanted to do just as a person. Yeah. And so now that I'm doing that, I'm happier. Yeah. I'm, I don't know, man. Do you think that, uh, that it gets, you, you get happier as, uh, you start becoming more successful in, uh, I mean, not in terms of money, but in terms of like, like, I mean, we're comics. So do you think that once you start like, um, getting out there and doing big shows and getting on the road or whatever the fuck you want to do, do you think like you'll probably feel better and more fulfilled? It spikes and then it plateaus and then it has to spike again. So you have to keep going. I think, I think I have to do it outside of comedy. You know, you're talking about self improvement. It's, Mm -hmm. it's for me, it's, it's more of just doing things that I want to do and, pursuing those like my happiness comes from almost accomplishing goals and and i think that you i've always had a confidence problem and Mm -hmm. but my problem was that i never really set goals and i think it's important to even if it's small goals to set a small goal and accomplish it because there's nothing that can replace that feeling of accomplishing a goal so in the sense of like success that you were talking about you have to be you have to taste that in order to pursue it. Otherwise you're just kind of wandering aimlessly. Like you spend 27 years like Aaron, just not really knowing like, Oh, I can, this is possible. I can feel like this. Yeah. And and so for me, it was once I started accomplishing things and, and, and doing actual things that made me happy, then I got out of that base, like flavor of sadness. But yeah, it, like Aaron was saying, it does spike. You do, and when, when it plateaus, for me, what I do is I just find something else. Like I, <laughs> like comedy plateau. Cool, I'll get better at climbing now. All right, yeah. plateau. All right, cool, I'll I'll go running again. So it's like I just kind of rotate through all my hobbies and set goals, and um, then it's easier to work out of my depression. But you know, that's every fucking day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm depressed every day. So. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you, man. <laughs> it's rolling out of bed and just feeling despair sometimes. Like fuck. I got to do something now. And so I'm always, I, I, when people ask me for advice or I feel like they look up to me, I'm like, you don't understand the struggle that was two hours ago. Yeah. That's like, exactly the, when people compliment me, I'm like, dude, I'm dying. Yeah. I yeah. can't even. But again, I try to just let myself have the victory. Like it, that personal struggle is exactly what that is. It's a personal struggle and it's not anyone else's business really. You mm-hmm. know? So I try to, Live in the victory. Depression will not allow you to live in the victory. Depression will actively make you push people away, will actively make you have people shut the fuck up so they don't talk to you. Like, that's, that's not you. That's your depression. You know what's been, I've, I've been, um, like thinking about it or looking at it a little bit closer. Um, it's funny because I totally do that and I just like, I'm just mean to people, but like kind of half jokingly, but also it's kind of like, dude, I don't really give a shit. Um, but then that only makes them want to be your friend more. <laughs> it's, the, <laughs> it's the worst, man. You're pushing them away. They're like, let me just hug you. Let me I just s- hug I you. I swear to God, dude, it's the worst. <laughs> that was my grandma on the phone. I'm going to have to leave soon. But if um, if you guys can keep, if you guys want to keep going, you're more than welcome. No, we can wrap this up in a little bit. You'd have more things that are not crossed out on your list. Yeah, so. do you guys want to like fly through some of those? I know we just what's your, sad for no reason. What's your biggest pet peeve about being a comedian? Um. That when people tell me, when people are like, oh, he, like I used to go out with this friend and whenever we would run into people, he would be like, oh, he wants, to, he's trying to be a comic. 
And it's like, I don't know how much more of a comedian I have to be. Like, I am a comic, dude. I'm out here every day hitting spots, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So um, that, because you're not a working comic, people don't think you're a comic. But it's like, I'm not a working comic, but I'm working towards being that. Yeah. So I don't know how much more of a comic I can be. You the, know what I mean? The ignorance of people. Mm-hmm. I, oh, I have some shit I'm going to bitch at about with you guys. I guess I can do it now. <laughs> there was this girl who listened to a recording of of mine, and she's a black girl. And she said, um, I mean, it was funny, but it was like you were telling really white jokes. And, uh, you know, I just, I, I, I like black jokes better. And I was like, what the fuck are you? I don't even talk about race on stage. Yeah. Like it was the, the ignorance was at a level I, I couldn't understand. It was ridiculous. But what does that even mean? Black jokes. She was like, you don't she, sound like Kevin Hart and I don't like it. She tried to describe it like this. She, so I talked about the, the, uh, Magic Johnson AIDS mm-hmm. thing. And she was like, well, in a black comedy club, they would have been like, well, I know y'all offended, but this is what it is. And that's how she was like, she was saying that that's how I should, if that's how black comedians speak. And it's like, it's like, I'm embarrassed that I. She wanted Def Jam comedy. (laughs) Yeah, she wanted Def Jam. I'm embarrassed that I played along with that nonsense for as long as I did. Like, I'm goddamn sick of it. I'm tired of it. It's because you're not a black comedian. You're a comedian who's black. Yeah. That's how, yeah, that's how I would describe and, and it, but I'll, I'll talk about it later. Somebody called me a racist the other day. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because, uh, I have a joke where I'm like, I'm Mexican, but I've never been in Mexico because it's scary. That's like, not, that's the setup. And then, uh, somebody was like, that's racist. And I was like, okay. And then his friend came up and he was like, yeah, that is racist. <laughs> and I was like, fuck both of you guys. And they were like, my, Sorry, I just thought I'd give you some tips. I'm like, you're not a comic. Yeah. yeah. You know? And Johnny, have you been to Mexico? <laughs> Johnny Gold and I were talking about this um, at uh, the Long Beach Laughing, Danny Frank's show. And it's, I think that's the next level of comedy right now. It's that, like, it needs to transcend race. Like, if you're, if you're a Middle Eastern comic and you talk about bombing on stage, congrats, you're the fourth person to do it tonight. Yeah. Like, like, there's, there's something that happens when, a you know quote unquote Middle Eastern comic does Middle Eastern jokes, but there's something completely different that happens when a comic does middle like does things that are real, but it happens to be because he's Middle Eastern. Like mm-hmm. it, when they talk about their life, there's something that transcends that that barrier of race that makes it generally funny. And and I didn't understand that up until like we talked about it. Like it didn't contextualize for me until Johnny Gold brought it up and someone was on stage and he was like. Look what he's talking about now and think about his set two minutes ago. And I was like, it's a stark contrast when you're real with a, a, an audience and, and, you know, not a fucking black comic. You, you're a comedian. So I don't know, general sense of funny, I think, is very important yeah. across everything. So I hate her. Um, <laughs> what? What's her name? I don't know. Because you're, you're not as you're this is the same thing. You're like a female comic. It's just a comic who's a female. Not yeah. female yeah. comic, so yeah. I agree. I try not like when I I used to do it a lot, but if I'm hosting and there's a female comic, I just call them a comic. Like you, they don't need to know that you're a female off the bat because I feel like when you do that, when you say this next female comic, like you put her in a box and you don't you you now she has to punch out of that box. Yeah, or like I remember I hosted one time and I brought up this girl and I felt awful and she didn't say anything. It was just because I'm like this. She's one of the funniest girls, and it's like, what the fuck? She's just funny. Yeah, she, big face. Yeah. yeah, and I said it, and it came out. But you know, we're working on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, what advice would you give new comics? I know that you're gonna be all self deprecating. Oh, I suck. I'm not. But what, like, what advice would you give them? Um, it's not a race, and there's no set path. Everybody does their own thing. However, you, it's a mix of you do what you have to do, and you do what you can. You just got to be nice to everybody because everybody is going to remember shit. Um, people, everybody books something or you never know who's going to have what job. I so love that comics are such a piece of shit that we have to tell each other to be nice to yeah. people. Like in regular workplaces, that's not a thing that's ever said. But in comedians, they're like, hey, man, don't be a fucking dick to the host. Like, yeah. <laughs> why is that not number one? <laughs> um, and um, I would say... Be ready with your material before you seek opportunities. Cause I see a lot of people and then they're put themselves out there and they're, they're trash and nobody tells them anything because they feel like, Oh, well, they must be doing something right. Cause they're getting booked everywhere or whatever. And it's like, yeah, but you know, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Work on your work on your craft so that when you have ten minutes, it's not ten minutes like where the it dips in and out. Of, yeah. yeah, it's just one hundred percent fire material, and you just crush it. Yeah. And that's basically uh, the best advice: is crush it as many times as you can, wherever you can, and then people will notice. Yeah. That's it. I uh, I do have to go to my grandma, so I'm gonna I'm gonna head out, guys. All right. I don't even think he has a grandma, to be honest. Yeah. Might just be lying. Yeah. Uh, I swear on my mama's grave <laughs> that. All right. Well, thanks for uh, coming to this humble abode, Mister Ernesto Ledesma. You got any shows coming up or? Oh yeah. Um. Let me let me double check. I have um, uh, Pasadena, the Ice House, on August eighteenth, oh. and, and then um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at my calendar now. Um, no, I do have some. Oh, oh yeah! In July, I'm going to be doing Alex's Bar on the seventh for Danny Frank, and Dope. then on the twenty first of July, I'm going to be on a show with Dean Del Rey at the Rec Room, um, and then yeah, at the Ice House, and then check out my podcast, the Who's That Cat podcast, available on all platforms. Go to my Instagram, Ernesto Ledesma dot comedy, and follow me. I post snippets on there, and I try to keep things interesting. Dope. So, again, thanks for coming. Uh, Aaron Chase is gone. He is at Aaron Chase 91 uh, This is the BuddyCast. Check us out on the Buddy System Comedy Network. Follow us on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher. I don't know what else we're on. We're on fucking everything. Is your podcast on everything, too? Yes. Dope. All right. Check him out at ErnestoLedesma.comedy. Yeah, or Google me, Ernesto Ledesma. <laughs> Google I, me. Yeah. Not, no one's ever said that on here. Google me. I'm yeah. going to steal that. <laughs> That's the way to do it. If you, have you ever Googled this? I'm sorry. We've gone too far. No, Google good. me. Google me, you guys. I, I, if you Google me, you're probably going to run into a family member of mine, and I'm going to leave it at that. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Prison. All right, guys. Thanks for, thanks for listening. We'll check you guys out. Uh, check us out on another episode. All right. Bye.